Our next speaker is John Grindrod, the author of Concretopia, a journey around the rebuilding of post-war Britain. Please welcome John. Good evening. Uh, what do you think of when somebody mentions Ladybird books? Uh, I'll, I'll wager it's normally uh, uh, Peter and Jane playing with their dog Pat in the back garden uh, of their semi-detached house. Perhaps their pipe-smoking father might be in the background disappearing into the shed to build something. Or you might even see uh, their mother through a window baking a cake. Uh, well, I'm uh, here to disabuse you of that image, as you can see. Because behind those cosy cardboard covers lurks something much more modern, which people don't really realise, and occasionally shockingly modern. Um, 2015 will be 100 years since the first Lady Bear book was published, but they didn't adopt the little board back format until 1940, and it was really only in the sort of post-war period that they got into their swing. And they tell us loads about how we modernised Britain after the war. And I think nobody really remembers that about them. Um, so uh, if you don't believe me, I'm going to show you what they did, how they did it, in my Lady Bird Book of Modernism. So uh, let's start with an architect. He's got a nice cardi, and he's planning the future. You can tell he's planning the future because it's got a flat roof. Um, uh, <laughs> This was the age of the expert, the scientist, and the planner. Um, here we've got some electricity cables being laid. Huge infrastructure projects, which Lady Bird gleefully covered uh, in their books. Um, and uh, they, they loved, they actually loved upheaval. If you kind of open any of the books about kind of modern life uh, that Lady Bird did, they're full of digging and smashing stuff up. Um, I was also digging to build stuff. Uh, hello, 1950s low-rise office block and uh, soon to be dwarfed by high-rise 60s office block, uh, which we see here being, uh, being constructed. This is obviously a steel frame. Uh, Ladybird really cuts to the chase here with, uh, with uh, modern design. Um, this really could be a diagram from the Bauhaus. And I think there's a lot of correlation between Ladybird and the Bauhaus. Uh, and they loved showing a bit of rough concrete, too. Um, they, you, know, they, you know, they were brutalist, Ladybird. They were unashamedly brutalist. They were, I would go so far as to say, roughy tufty when it came <laughs> to modernism. They weren't afraid to stray away from, from uh, steel and glass. Um, and, and what's going on here? Well, huge traffic jam, because you can just see, creeping into the picture, they're building a flyover. <laughs> um, and what could be more, what could be more picturesque uh, and, more, and more 1960 than the building of a flyover um, illustrated by Lady Bird Book, uh, uh, illustrated David Carey. And it's worth mentioning that actually, you should probably see at the bottom, they, so many different illustrators, but they have that amazing unified style that brings everything together into a sort of, you sort of look at them now and this huge kind of wave of nostalgia, um, even though you're looking at something that is so unbelievably, unrelentingly uh, kind of in your face modern as a steel frame or a flyover being constructed. Um, uh, but, you know, mod modernism wasn't always stressful. It wasn't all, all about flyovers. We've, we've, you know, I, didn't, I can't really think of a more idyllic image than this. It sort of swallows an Amazon's meets north by northwest, isn't it, really? <laughs> um, but not many people would have that kind of architect design life. We'd much more, much more likely have this kind of thing. This is a point block, uh, the first of which was constructed in Britain in Harlow in 1951. And as you can see, it's building with reinforced concrete. They're, you know, they're, uh, it's all about that in Ladybird. You know, I mean, forget kings and queens, forget fairy tales. It's about building with reinforced concrete. Um, this is a Swedish design. Um, and, uh, and at the bottom, 
which you might not be able to read, it says, when carefully planned and sited, they can be as beautiful in their own way as were the best homes of the past. With their extra space, sunlight, and fresh air, they can be even more convenient and pleasant to live in. So there's no beating around the bush. They weren't showing this as some kind of dystopia. They loved it. Uh, so much so, the flats didn't, didn't really stop there. They became taller, they became more brutalist. Away went that nice, that nice friendly Scandinavian design. And, you know, it's a reminder that Ladybird wasn't just for middle-class kids. It was for, you know, kids growing up on council estates like I did. So, you know, it was nice to see them representing uh, a, a uh, <laughs> nice friendly high-rise there. Um, and prefabricated schools was a really big a really big thing. Obviously at this time the welfare state was being constructed, loads of new schools, loads of new hospitals, and Ladybird was as much part of that modernisation of Britain as anything. Their, their keyword reading scheme, the, the Peter and Jane books, was launched in 1964 and helped several generations of children start to read uh, in classrooms that looked exactly like that. Now here is uh, basically Le Corbusier's 1920s vision of the city in the park rendered through a ladybird prism. <laughs> um, and um, it's also a reminder that in this period, in the sort of post-war period, we built over 40 new towns in Britain, from s starting with Stevenage, ending in Milton Keynes. And, uh, you know, they were, they were telling it as it was at Ladybird. This, I think, is the saddest image, television centre. I think it reminds me of what's happened to television centre, what's happened to the BBC, what's happened to Ladybird. It's bloody awful, really. <laughs> um, and uh, this represents, of course, the march of progress. Um, it's a kind of modernist cliche, really, the, uh, the, the uh, row of pylons stomping across the landscape. And, uh, but Lady Webb weren't afraid of, of, um, of, sh of showing, you know, a pretty standard image. Here we can see, though, two epic modernist Ladybird visions. The first, um, well, I should, I should say that Ladybird really, you know, they were like a 70s film star. They loved a fast car. They loved a jet plane. So you open up half, half of Ladybird books. It's full of them. Um, on this side, we've got London Airport. This is in the years before it was renamed Heathrow Airport. Um, and on the far side, um, we've got uh, the English motorway system in its beautiful strangeness. Um, and the first motorway in Britain was the Preston Bypass in 1956. So um, just 10 years later, 11 years later, if I could count, um, they were, Ladybird were showing it off. But they, were, they weren't afraid of anything. Nuclear power. I mean, no subject was too big for Ladybird. Um, I mean, it is the most baffling book I've ever read, I have to say. Um, it re I mean, forget Proust. It, if you can get to the end of these 48 pages and have any idea of what is going on in a nuclear reaction, you're better than I am. I literally have no idea. But I had a go. They were all about great inventions, they were, you know, and you know, things like the telephone, you know, going into great detail about things that were in our everyday life that were amazing breakthroughs. And, um, you know, it's progress, it's technology, it's innovation. And, uh, you know, we might think of Ladybird as being akin to a, a sort of suburban sitcom uh, like Terry and June. But actually, I think of Ladybird as more like, more like a Stanley Kubrick film. Um, even the computer <laughs> makes its way in, which is wonderful. This is, this is actually Milton Keynes yesterday. <laughs> um, um, all of these faster mainframe computers, the red ones, they're all connected up. They're operating a tease made just out of shot. <laughs> um, and I think this really, this for me, really represents the classic Ladybird image. Um, it's, uh, it's about the public services, remember them. Um, <laughs> it's a coal-fired power station, sure, but it's, you know, it's in some lovely countryside, a bit bleak, possibly, but, um, you know, it's probably winter. 
It is winter, isn't it? It's either winter or, or that tree's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the countryside and the future. It's progressed and pastoral. It's, you know, it's, it's bringing those things together at last. And, you know, Lady Bird just didn't shy away from what was really happening. And, you know, they met the modern world with boundless enthusiasm, energy and optimism. So that really, that really is my Lady Bird book of modernism. Um, it's... it's these images are many more like them. Don't think that this is it. There were loads more like this. They were a reminder of an era of utopian visions and experimentation. They're a spirit that we've lost, something we, we need to regain again. And that's why I've decided this is going to be my house. <laughs> You're welcome to drop by any time. Uh, just wear a nice cardi, bring your pipe. <laughs> and, and your own jetpack. Thank you.